post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. You just spent six grueling months in recovery after surviving a skydiving accident gone horribly wrong. Yes, skydiving. One minute you're soaring through the clouds, the next, boom, your parachute decides to take the day off. Miraculously, you survive. Hospitals, rehab, the whole shebang. Now you're home and someone casually suggests, hey, wanna try zip lining this weekend? Your body says, nope. Your brain screams, nope. Even the sound of a plane overhead sends your heart into overdrive. That, my friend, is PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's like your brain installed a faulty alarm system that goes off at the drop of a hat. Just when you're enjoying a sandwich, boom, flashback. PTSD kicks in after you've been through something really bad, like life-shattering bad. And once it's in, it loves to party. Smells, sounds, even random images can bring everything flooding back. One second you're chilling, the next you're sweating, shaking, and wondering if you're in a horror movie. And the worst part, you didn't even buy a ticket. Bipolar disorder. Now imagine waking up and deciding today's the day you write a novel, launch a business, paint your apartment neon green, and adopt two dogs. You haven't slept in two nights, but who needs sleep when you've got this much genius? That's the manic side of bipolar disorder. You feel unstoppable, like a superhero, a very caffeinated superhero. Then, bam, the crash. Suddenly, even brushing your teeth feels like climbing a mountain. You're convinced everything you did during your high phase was ridiculous. Your neon green walls, terrible idea. The dogs, too many dogs. Welcome to the bipolar coaster, complete with wild highs and crushing lows. It's emotional ping pong, and your brain is playing both sides. This isn't just mood swings. It's a chemical imbalance that throws your emotions into chaos. And sometimes it brings along friends like irritability, poor decision-making, and spontaneous karaoke sessions at 3 a.m. Bipolar disorder affects millions of people and has real roots, genetics, brain chemistry, and sometimes past trauma. It's not about being dramatic. And you can't just shake it off with a dance playlist and a smoothie. Schizophrenia. Remember that imaginary friend you had as a kid? The one who was always around, never judged you, and maybe helped you blame your sibling when you broke mom's vase? Eventually, you grew up and realized that your invisible buddy was just a figment of your overactive imagination. Now imagine that same imaginary friend never left, but instead of being cute and playful, they're loud, intense, and won't stop talking. That's a peek into life with schizophrenia. People with this condition might hear voices, see things, or believe in entire alternate realities, like they're starring in their own secret agent movie, except they're the only one who bought a ticket. Their brain? Think of it as a radio stuck in scan mode. One minute it's tuned into this reality, the next it's picking up a station from a galaxy far, far away. And it's not just voices. Schizophrenia can come with strong beliefs that feel as real as gravity, even if nobody else shares them. Roughly one in every 300 people deal with this mental plot twist. And no, it's not about having a split personality or being dangerous. There's no magic cure, but with therapy, medication, and a strong support system, people can absolutely manage their symptoms and live fulfilling lives. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD. Imagine walking into a circus where lions are leaping, clowns are flipping, and confetti is flying through the air, and you're supposed to sit quietly and read a book. That's kind of what it's like to live with ADHD. Your brain becomes the ultimate three ring circus, but instead of popcorn and applause, it's a whirlwind of distractions, energy bursts, and forgotten to-do lists. With ADHD, your mind plays the role of a hyperactive ringmaster, yanking your attention from one exciting act to another before you've even had a chance to process the first one. One moment you're deep in thought, and the next you're wondering how bees communicate while also reaching for a snack and checking your phone. Focusing on just one thing? That's like asking a squirrel to meditate. People with ADH often struggle with attention, organization, and controlling impulses. Their brain is on a constant treasure hunt, chasing whatever looks new, fun, or slightly sparkly. There are different types too. Inattentive ADHD means you struggle to focus or finish tasks. You forget stuff a lot. Hyperactive impulsive ADHD makes it hard to sit still or keep quiet. You talk fast, move constantly, and act without thinking. Combined ADHC, that's the double feature, distracted and hyper, all rolled into one very energetic, loud package. Globally, 
ADHD affects around 129 to 366 million people, from energetic kids to multitasking adults. But the good news? With the right support, like therapy, medication, and structure, ADHD can be managed like a well-trained circus act. Obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. OCD is like having a bossy little voice in your head that just won't chill. It tells you to do things again and again, even when you know they're already done. It's not about being neat or liking things clean. It's about feeling like something bad might happen unless you follow certain routines or rules your brain makes up on the spot. You might feel like you have to tap a light switch five times before leaving the room, or else your brain whispers, something bad will happen. Or maybe you organize your pens by color and height, and if one's out of place, it bugs you like a rock in your shoe. Then there's the classic hand washing. You touch a doorknob and suddenly it feels like you've touched the surface of the moon. So you wash your hands again and again until your hands are cleaner than a surgeon's on their third scrub. These repetitive actions are called compulsions and they're usually done to calm the uncomfortable thoughts or fears called obsessions. OCD affects around 79 million people worldwide. So if you're dealing with it, you're definitely not alone. The good news? It's treatable. Therapy, especially something called cognitive behavioral therapy. And sometimes medication can help turn down that overactive brain alarm and give you back control. Depressive disorder. Imagine waking up every day in a world that looks like someone turned the saturation all the way down. Gray skies, gray walls, even your morning coffee feels gray. That's depression. It's not just feeling sad after a bad day or two. It's like being stuck in a loop of emotional winter, no matter how sunny it is outside. Depression sucks the joy out of everything. Pizza? Meh. Your dog? Too much effort. Your favorite YouTube channel? Not even that can crack a smile. You might end up sleeping all day or not sleeping at all, eating like you've got bottomless hunger or skipping meals for days. Your energy levels? Somewhere between sloth and broken robot. And here's the kicker. Over 280 million people worldwide are stuck in this emotional fog. It doesn't always look the same. Some people smile through it while others isolate themselves completely. People with depression often become their own critics, overthinking every mistake and feeling guilty for things that aren't even their fault. It's like living with a negative sports commentator in your head narrating your every move. But remember, it's not a sign of weakness. It's a real condition. Many don't even realize they're dealing with depression, but if you're constantly low, exhausted, or feel like your spark has completely gone out, it might be time to talk to a therapist. They can help you understand what's going on and find ways to feel human again.